welcome to the broadcast. We're continuing our series, Lessons from Numbers. Our scripture text for this series is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11 to 13. Let's open our Bibles to the text. Now all these things happen to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the age have come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. May God add a blessing to the hearers of his red word. We have discussed in our last two episodes, stage one and stage two. In stage one, we discuss how the children was preparing for the journey. In stage two, we discuss their first approach to the promised land. Our task this morning, in stage three, we will discuss wandering in the wilderness. Wandering, that's right. Not W-O-N, W-A-N, wandering. Praise God. We will cover chapters 15 in the book of Numbers all the way to chapter 21. Now we're not going to discuss all that this morning. I don't want to run you away. But if you have an opportunity to read those chapters, read it and you will get an even better understanding of what we're going to discuss today. First of all, let us understand this concerning stage three. In stage three, the children of Israel continues to complain and rebel against God. And because of this, this will lead to numerous deaths. People just dying in the wilderness. Dying because of they wouldn't recognize authority concerning Moses and Aaron. And God had to get them. God destroyed so many in the wilderness because of that. And then think about it. The generation that saw God perform miracles to free them from Pharaoh and the Egyptians brought them out of Egypt, delivered them, and took them safely through the Red Sea on dry land. They are now going to die in the wilderness, in the desert, because they are rebelling and complaining to God. Let me ask you something this morning. Have you forgotten what the Lord has done for you? Have you forgotten that when you didn't know him, you was out there in darkness. You was out there doing all kind of devilish things. You was without Christ. And the Lord reached way down and picked you up. Brought you out of darkness into the marvelous light. And now... You have forgotten him. 
See, let's, let's make one thing clear this morning. You cannot be in Christ today and out tomorrow. Not if you're truly with Christ. See, we want to entertain two questions this morning. Question number one. What happened to the Christian who drift away from God? And question number two, how can you prepare yourself to avoid drifting and instead become a godly person? Let's entertain and answer question one. As I stated earlier, Somebody got it wrong. They try to get to you and say, Oh child, I used to know the Lord, but I don't know him no more. It's no. The truth be told, you begin to drift. That's right. You begin to drift. Your devotion was not the same. You start missing church. You stop reading your Bible. You stop praying. Come on now, let's be honest. You begin to hang out with the wrong crowd again. Keeping bad company. Come on. Let's be honest this morning. Went back to some of your old habits. My, my, my. And it was a gradual thing. You ever been swimming? If you, when you go out to swim. In an ocean or a lake. It's important before you get out there in the water. Is to set you some markers. You mean they haven't taught you that? Why set markers? Well, you need to take a minute and look at where you are. Set the water cooler. Set your clothes or look at the umbrella that you placed in the ground. But set you a marker then find you another marker between that spot that's on the land that's stationary that when you get out there in the water and you plan and you begin to drift and all the time you think you in that same spot and you don't drift it way out of reach Unless you're taking that glimpse at that marker on the land and say, hey, wait a minute. I'm getting a little too far from my marker. Oh, hallelujah. See, God has in his word, praise God, some markers. Oh, hallelujah. The psalmist said in Psalms 119, he said, thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against thee. Oh hallelujah. So then. To answer. Question number one. You don't just. Drift away from God. It's your constantly. Complaining. It's your constant. uh, Griping. It's your constant. Rebelling against God. And you not drawing nigh to him. And not practicing things. Where you are held accountable. Then you begin to drift. Oh hallelujah. And this was the case. With the children of Israel. They drifted. They complained. They rebelled. They complained about the bread. Wasn't costing them anything. Manna. Angels food. Coming down from heaven. They complained about that. 
We tired of this manna. We've been eating manna on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We're tired of this manna. Mama in the kitchen don't had all kind of ways she cooked manna. Sliced manna. Sauteed manna. Manna made, just put in the oven. Manna, oh, they, all kind of types of ways they, they did manna. Complain, complain. The Lord gave them water. Then when they complained about meat, the Lord gave them quail. Choice meat. But yet complain. And with so many times bring up to Moses and Aaron about, Oh, y'all just brought us out here to die in the wilderness. Oh, 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 oh. oh we miss oh, the the leeks and the onions and the garlic, all that stuff we had back in Egypt, we missed that. You know that sound like some of you? I'm talking today. Some of you have those same complaints. Seem like you never satisfied. Well, we answer question number one. What happened to the Christian? Who drift away from God? Well, first of all, the scripture teaches us if we will worship God in spirit and in truth. Jesus told the woman at the well in John chapter 4, verse 24, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Are you worshiping that way? See, if you want to keep from drifting, praise God, you got to worship God. You got to worship God in spirit and in truth. Oh, the second thing you need to do to uh, keep from drifting is study God's word. You ever thought about that? And I like what the scripture says in 2 Timothy 2.15. The word says, Study to show thyself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See, you cannot detect what's false out there in that old evil world if you don't know what the truth is. They got so many things that are false out there. They got it wrong. They got it backwards. So then what I'm trying to get over to you and look how it's written in the word. Now some of your translations sort of take the weight off the word here as Paul is writing to Timothy, his son in the gospel. But the key word here, he says study. Study God's word. He says study to show thyself approved. See some of you, oh yeah, I know you brag. You brag on the job. You brag to your family members. Oh, I read the Bible every day. I got the Bible download. I got the Bible app on my phone. And I read the word every day. Yeah, that's good. But let me help you this morning. Some of y'all doing a good job of reading your Bible. But if I was to ask you this morning, explain to me the doctrine of the Trinity. Explain to me the doctrine of the virgin birth. Explain to me the doctrine of justification. Explain to me the doctrine of sanctification. Can you explain it to me? Can you explain it to the one on the job? That unbeliever who's asking questions. Can you explain it to your children? And why, why are you doing us this way, preacher? Because I'm trying to show you there is a difference between reading and studying. 
let me help you. Do you recall when you had to really study at a subject to get it? And especially that subject that just wasn't, you just wasn't good in. It could have been math. It could have been English. It could have been science. So guess what? To pass that test, to pass that particular class and, and get a good grade and to move on to the next school year, it, some of you, boy, you had to get a tutor. You had to study. You had to give it some time. You had to really prepare yourself in testing and reviews and all those things. You see the point I'm getting at? See, you can't just read the word of God. Here Paul tells Timothy, you got to study. What do you mean study? You got to take time to go in God's word and pull it apart and, and pray before you open that Bible to study and ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate your mind, to give you the spiritual insights out the lesson. Because you trying to study that way you don't have to drift. See, the word is your anchor. Hallelujah. And when you anchored in the Lord, hallelujah, oh, Satan may come like the wind and have you tossed to and fro, but oh, if you are anchored in the word, you ain't going nowhere. Oh, hallelujah. Let's study the word. Take time to study. Then third, in answering that question, what happens to the Christians who drift? You, you got to pray. Pray. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 Pray without ceasing. What that mean? You got to pray all the time. Pray all the time. And the Psalms teaches us say, well, my, it's, it ought to be ten times you get in touch with the Lord during the day. Three times you ought to request things, and the other seven times you ought to just call him up, talking to God, and thank him. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, I just thank you this morning for life after the screen. Boy, on your way driving, well, Lord, I just thank you for giving me traveling mercies. And you know by noontime, Lord, I just thank you, Lord. You've just been good and it's been a special day. God, I just thank you for constant. But how? Get in touch with God. Will you do that? This will keep you from drifting. Then before we answer question number two, how can you prepare yourself to avoid drifting Instead of becoming a godly person. I want to carry you into chapter 21. Of the book of Numbers. Because it's here. Praise God. That they. Began to speak against Moses. And they was talking about Moses. And they were griping to God about something. And you know God had had enough. The children of Israel. And God sent poisonous snakes to punish rebellious Israel. That's why I told you it's not a good thing to keep complaining and griping, mumbering. The people, when the Lord sent those poisonous snakes and the people began to just drop dead like flies, the people then repented and God had to Provide a cure. Oh yes. He told Moses. Gave him these instructions. To. Make a snake out of brass. And place it on a pole. And then. I want you to take that. Snake. Of brass. On that pole. And set it in the camp. Where all could view it. I want everybody to see it. So he had to put it in a, a, a elevation, a spot, a location that all could see. And then he said, anyone bitten 
All they needed to do was look upon that brass snake to be healed. Look how simple it was. The cure, the antidote. Uh, simpler than the vaccine that everybody fighting over to get now with COVID-19. You know, you're waiting when the Lord said, look, all you got to do if you are bitten by this poisonous snake is just look and you can live. Wow. Now, now Jesus used this event as an illustration to win Nicodemus to Christ in the Gospel of John chapter 3 verse 14 and 15. You read it. But basically he was saying he provided an antidote. Praise God. And do you know some of them folks were still so stubborn still so rebellious that they wouldn't look and live and the look was in is represent faith and I want you to know that's the problem today so many make salvation difficult it's not difficult look here and this is the Old Testament but since Jesus has come and died on Calvary and got up the third day with all power in his hand. He said if you would just believe in him. Have faith in God. I like Paul who used this. According to Acts 16. When he was. And Silas was delivered. In that Philippian jail. And oh hallelujah. And all that. When the earth quite shook the prison. And that Philippian jealous saw the miraculous works of God. He called for a light and he cried out, What must I do to be saved? And Paul and give him the long story in a long drawn out way. He gave him the short version. He said, Man, all you got to do is believe and you will be saved. And your whole house Whole to be saved. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I think that's the problem we have today. We complicate the gospel. God made this easy. Oh hallelujah. Well. As I stated so many died. Because they failed to look and live. And let me ask you this before we close out. Why can't you look today and live? Why stay in the situation you in? When God will bring you out. Will you look today? Will you confess today with your mouth? Lord I'm a sinner. I'm undone. But I'm looking to you Jesus. Lord deliver me. Lord save me. The Lord will save you today. Today is the day of salvation. As we promised, let's answer this second question. How can you prepare yourself to avoid drifting and instead become a godly person? Well, if you recall those things we just discussed in answering question number one by worshiping God, you need to worship Him. In spirit and in truth. You need to study God's word. And you need to pray. Make this something you do on a daily basis. But I want to close with you. With something I really feel. Led that I should share with you. That you need to put a practice. Sometime during the day. Each and every day. To get you into a habit. Of being in line with God. And that is, will you read Psalms 1? And that's how I want to close today. Let's go there. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, 
nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of of the righteous. For the Lord knows. The way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly. Shall perish. So yes. You can. Praise God. You can. Live holy and righteous. In this present day. And yes, if you really want to be prepared and prepare yourself to avoid drifting and, and be a godly person, put to practice what Psalms 1 is saying and remember to worship, remember to study, remember to pray and the Lord will see you safely through and yes, you will have a victorious life. And remember to give thanks. God bless you.